Hello there and welcome back to my workshop. So today I'm going to show you how to machine that well-known picture into uh, a piece of wood. Now the preceding video to this I showed you in Kavco how to set the tool pairs up and the speed and feeds. There's a lot of questions about speed and feeds. Well, we'll try and put that to rest today. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our piece of work, which is a piece of three quarter inch timber. In this case, this is uh, Tasmanian pine. And we're going to screw it squarely onto the bed. And then we're going to reference the machine home okay and then we will reference the what's known as the work offset or the zero position of that piece of work and I'll show you how to do all that and take some of the mystery out of it Okay, I've had a lot of people ask me about this little controller. Now, essentially, this is running the same type of program to Mac 3 or Mac 4. Um, now, this is a standalone, um, what's known as an offline controller. You don't need another computer to run. You know, I don't need Windows 8 or Windows 10 computer with a program in it to run a CNC router. This has a built-in computer. Um, it's, as far as I can tell, it's pretty bomb-proof. Um, and it is very simple to use. Uh, it may look a little confusing knowing that it's a, a five-axis controller, but we're only using three. You know, we've only got three switched on. And most of these lettering and numbers here, you don't use unless you want to write G-code. Okay? I, I very rarely write any G-code at all. There are programs like uh, Cavco or Vetrix that do that for you. Incidentally, below this uh, video, uh, just above the comments section, in the video description section, uh, you will find a 5% discount for any of the Cavco programs. That's Cavco Maker, Maker Plus, or Cavco the main program. Cavco the main program, that is a professional program uh, for, you know, sort of medium to large companies, I suppose. Um, Maker Plus is for, I suppose, people like me that's uh, right into this sort of stuff, and uh, and for those people that uh, you know sort of do it as a, a semi-profession as well. Uh, but Maker Plus is for the hobbyist, and of course they're priced accordingly. So what we're going to do with this controller. And you would do this in Mark 3 or Mark 4. But like I say, this is, uh, I think it's easier to use. Uh, it's just as reliable. And it's cheaper, actually. So what you need to do first, um, I, I think what I'll do is I'm going to zoom you into the just the screen. And uh, you'll have to watch my finger. Okay, first things first. Um, you can see this reset flashing. Okay, nothing, nothing will move at all uh, until we take that off. Now to take that off, you come to this, uh, like a, a an X with some dots. Press that, and it goes green. So that means now this is live and talking to the to the little CNC router. So the first thing we're going to do is home the machine now. To do that, we need to first of all select the. This is in the mo at the moment. This is in the work coordinates. So what we need to do is select the machine coordinates and it's grayed out. 
So that's telling us, well, the machine hasn't homed yet. Okay, so to do that, we're going to go here, then bring it down to return to home. Now I'll bring it down here and it's still red. Now it'll stay red until I either press the OK or this button in and the machine will uh, home itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out and show you um, the machine homing or the router homing uh, watch it uh, sort of go to the uh, the home switches which are here on each axis and it will register and you'll see this go bright, bright yellow okay here we go so we will press the okay So it's just gone up to the home switch is just backing off. It'll do the same in the X. So the next thing to do now is to tell the controller where the start is on this piece of work. Now, if you can see that little tiny mark there, right, the little tiny pen mark, now that's, that's the indicating the zero point of the work. I've got a very sharp tool in here, so what I'm going to do is jog over that's the name given for moving the road ahead. So we're going to jog over until that pointy tool is right there and we're going to set the zero coordinate for the piece of work, the start of the piece of work, just in the X and Y. We're going to have to change the tool and do the Z differently. Okay, if you didn't see that little mic before, there it is there. So I've got the, the hand control now, and I'm just uh, using the hand control to move this around. Let me just move it down a bit. And I come across on the X. And then we go back in the Y. Very, very controllable. Fetching it down quite close. I think that's fairly close. And back just a little bit. So all we're interested in is the X position and the Y position of the center of that tool, which is the very point. And that's pretty well bang on that, on that edge and in line with that mark. Okay, so you can see now, because uh, we're in the, the, still in the machine coordinates, is yellow, and you can see that the, the these are com commonly known as DROs or digital readouts. Um, so the Z is come down in minus 96 position. Now that's 96.1 millimeters away from the home switch uh, in the Z, and this is um, plus 60 millimeters or nearly 61 millimeters in the Y from the home switch and X is 108.5 away from the home switch. Now we're going to change the coordinate system to register where the start of that work is. So do that is just simple. Don't worry about that. <laughs> this one here we want work coordinates. So that is where the start of the program is. 
So what we do for that is press this button. Okay, so now we're in the individual axes, registering the individual axes. So now we're on the the X, so we can press OK, and it's gone to zero. So that's X zero, and we just move this down to Y, so it's red, indicating well it's not been changed. Okay, so here we go and press OK and it's gone to zero. So we have zeroed the X and Y coordinates for that job. So the next thing we do now is change the tool to the correct tool which is going to be a half inch um, rotor bit and we will zero the end of the tool in relation to the work with the Z. Okay, so we're back on the hand control again now. And what I've done is I've just moved the head over just anywhere on the surface of the material because this is dead flat and so that means that we can register the end of the tool to the top of this piece of work anywhere on this surface. It doesn't matter. Okay, so the way in which we, the easiest way in which to do this, to find out where the end of that tool is in relation to the surface of the work is just by using a piece of paper. So just get our piece of paper and put it underneath the tool. Keep making sure that your fingers are well away. Select Z on the controller and just bring it down very very quietly. It's very controllable. Do not have this run in when you do this and do not put your fingers anywhere underneath that tool. You could end up losing your fingers. Just slightly move the piece of paper. Just print, oop, just grabbing it there. That's it. It's just grabbed it. See I can't move the paper out. So now I know that that tool is right on the top of that surface. So now we will set the Z in the controller. So we now just move this down to the Z and you can either press OK or this button here, it doesn't matter. And now you press that Z0. Okay, so to get out of this part of the screen, just press Escape. And the next thing we're going to do is lift, oh, let's turn this off first. Gotta make sure this control is turned off because uh, when you turn the controller on, uh, it locks these out. Okay, so now we can lift it up out the way. So the next thing to do is to put our G code in, our first G code file. Very easily done. We get our thumb drive. Insert it into the controller and open file. And you can see that it's reading the disk. No, not exactly a disk, a thumb drive. We'll open that and there it is there, cut one. Uh, cut one is a 12.7 millimeter, which is equivalent to half an inch. Okay, and we press that so then we can come up and open that file into the controller. Okay, so now that is in the controller. Now to make sure it's in the controller, we can come here, press, and there is the actual G code. Now we can escape out of that. Um, I have not transferred that file into the controller, although the controller has a built-in memory of 8 gig, which is way, <laughs> which is very, very sufficient for a device like this. Um, but we've expanded the memory by putting in a 32 gig flash drive. So what I'm doing is, it's reading 
directly off the flash drive and administering it to the router. So that's now all ready to go. So what we're going to do is start this cut. Uh, I uh, will manually start the spindle up. I don't have it set up yet to uh, for the for the controller to manage the spindle. That'll be next week. And incidentally, all I'm going to do to start everything up is push that button there. That's the go button. It's a stop button. Also have an emergency stop on the hand controller as well. So here we go. Mm -hmm. 